Hello class, guess what? We're moving on to persuasive speeches now, which also means that we're coming to the end of the semester. So what I wanted to do in this video was overview what is persuasion, also provide you with information about your research requirements and the speech requirements for the persuasive presentation. So to start, how does a persuasive speech differ than informative speech. A persuasive topic just goes beyond informing the audience about something. For informative speaking, oftentimes you might provide directions, information, provide us with new, interesting, intriguing knowledge that we might not have known of before, right? You're not asserting your opinion in this. You're just giving information. In the persuasive speech, however, you're taking it to the next step, which means you are not just informing us, but you are asking us and identifying a problem or a need that exists, and then giving us some type of tangible action steps that we can take in order to make a change whether it's in our attitudes, values, behaviors, or belief. So the purpose of persuasion, to sum it up, you are going to try to change or reinforce an attitude, belief, behavior, or action that we might have. All right. So it goes again, like I said, just beyond informing, you need to tell us what to do. Commercials and advertisement are great examples of persuasion. What they usually do is they identify a problem or a need. They tell you what's missing, how your life would be great with this because it's not right now. And then what do they do? They tell you this product or this system will help you make that change, or it's something that you need, right? So the next thing about persuasive speaking is there are two formats that you're going to use for the body of your speech. The format of persuasion is going to be very similar to what you have already done. Okay, with the instructions from the three speech and the informative speech. A persuasive speech will also com compose of an introduction, the body, and a conclusion. However, depending on which format you focus on, you might have a few more points than the other. So there are two formats that you can use for your persuasive speeches. There's a problem cost solution format, which is very similar to what you're used to with an informative speech and also the narrative speech, okay? And then there's the Monroe's motivated sequence format. The Monroe's motivated sequence is very similar, except it has an addition of two steps. And these additional steps are basically foundations that allow you to deep, deeply consider the needs and the benefits for the audience. Okay. In the video links that I provide, it per shows you the difference between the problem cause solution format and Monroe's motivated sequence. See which one best fits your speech. They're very similar, but ultimately it depends on your goal of persuasion. Okay. Just to give you an idea, problem cause solution format is generally used for more big picture problems right, where perhaps the solution is not as tangible or as immediate than 
perhaps like going to the store and buying a bag of candy. It might focus more on legislative legislative procedures or policies or larger action steps that we need to take in order to get something done. Monroe's motivated sequence is equally as effective, but you need to recognize what is your goal. If your goal is individual action, like you want us to do something individually, you want us to like make sure we go and take out the recycle bin or recycle all our cans and bottles, right? We can definitely do that in the problem solution format, but you can also do that in the Monroe's Motivated Sequence. And the format of Monroe's Motivated Sequence is more specific to target individual action. And so consider what your topic is and what goal you want for the audience, okay? Now, moving on to the research requirements. So similar to the informative speech, you do have a research requirement and the research requirement includes four source citations, right? And what that means is you will have to find four credible sources to back up your points and your use it as evidence. However, you need various different types of supporting materials that we discussed last time. Perhaps they are include statistics, testimony from a lay person or personal testimony, expert testimony, you might want to use analogies, definitions, whatever you need to set up the relevance of the issue or the problem that you're identifying, okay? Another really important criteria for this speech is to include various types of persuasive appeals. So what I want you to consider is using logical appeal, emotional appeal, and credi credibility in your speech, also known as ethos, pathos, and logos. They're the three available means of persuasion. When we use these three different persuasive appeals together, you have the most impact. Oftentimes, you've probably observed speeches or presentations where it's just all statistics, right? And it's kind of boring. It doesn't stay with you as perhaps another speaker who might use statistics, but also emotional appeal. And that person has established credibility and sincereness throughout their speech. So ensure that you use ethos, pathos, and logos in your speech. Okay. Ethos is the credibility component of speaking. You did that, a part of that in your informative speech, establishing your credibility. You need to continue to do that for this speech, but not only are you continuing to establish your credibility, but you need to tell the audience why the speech is relevant to them and it's important for them to listen. That is part of the credibility process. Next is pathos. And pathos is our emotional appeal. There are different ways that we can appeal to the audience's emotions, right? Through targeting various feelings um, and issues. And so I want you to examine how you can appeal to our emotions. And finally, there's logos. Logos is the use of reasoning. And that kind of goes to the research requirement and the four source citations that I discussed earlier. Okay, vary your sources. Don't only use statistics or definitions. Make sure that you get a personal testimony, expert testimony, um, statistics, 
and perhaps something else. Maybe it's a definition or some type of analogy or comparison. And all of that put together will allow for the most valuable experience of persuasion. So now that I've talked about the requirements of the speech, um, there is one more that I wanted to highlight. You do not need a presentational aid for the persuasive presentation. Why? Because I want you to persuade us through your words. We don't need pictures um, and other graphics to take away from the essence of persuasion. Although it can be useful in some formats, it is not required, but I do not want your persuasive speech to primarily focus on a PowerPoint. Only use it as an aid if you want to, but it's not required. Okay, so now moving on to the speech requirements. So this is an individual speech. The speech should be six to eight minutes long. I also want this speech to be extemporaneous. And I'm sure you're very familiar with what extemporaneous means, which means you should practice off your note cards. Do the full outline, which is also another requirement for this class, full sentence outline with APA citations, right? But use a note card, highlight your main points, and so you can practice to deliver extemporaneously. Also, make sure that this speech has an action step, okay? You need to tell us in the third point or your last point what you want me to do. If you're telling me that global warming is an issue and it's bad, you need to tell me exact steps that I can take to try to reduce my carbon footprint, okay? If it's more on a um, policy level, your speech is more on a policy level, then tell me what bills are out there and who I need to contact and what maybe organizations I should donate to that you have vetted and what states I can, and also proactive steps that I can take to make a difference. All right, so that's what I mean by action steps. And then finally, you are required to record this speech in groups again. So you'll have an assignment coming up. You're going to stay in the same groups as you did last time. And it seemed like it was pretty successful. So you're going to record in groups at a time that meets everybody's needs. You're going to give the speech individually, okay? And you know the speech requirements. So hopefully that provides you with some information about how to go about your speech. Make sure that you complete the lab assignments that are tied to the persuasive presentation and go to the communication lab to practice your speech early. It is critical that you take time to practice, even if you don't feel prepared, all right? So today I kind of shared with you a little bit about persuasion, the requirements for research and also the requirements for the speech presentation. Please check in with me if you have any questions and I look forward to listening to your last speech. Ciao.